Okay, so here we have a data set that has age, sex, impulsivity, alcohol problems, alcohol problems total, distress tolerance, and drinking. And so we're going to start with um, looking at the relationship between impulsivity and alcohol use as a function of sex. Let's start with that. Um, I don't, I, I didn't check this one um, before class, so hopefully this works. Uh, we might have to hunt a little bit to make sure that we find a, a, an interaction with sex. Um, I do know, I did check the impulsivity by distress tolerance one. I know that that works. So, uh, all right, let's do this. Um, what's the first thing that we need to do in order to start looking at interactions or hypothesized interactions? What's that? Center something. All right. So our outcome variable is going to be alcohol problems. So let's center all of the other things. How do we do that? All right. So let's go analyze, descriptives, explore, and oh, I'm going to I'm going to change this. Oh, I can actually, I think I can do it in the thing, right? Analyze, descriptives, explore, and I can right click on these. And then names. All right, and let's put impulsivity, distress, and drink over here. Shoot. We are like even uh, if even if the residuals are normal, we're still centering because we need to center every iteration. That what's happening? Correct. Um, even if residuals yeah, are normally distributed, no, you would I, I still center. Like and centering a variable won't change your residuals, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about that. But okay. yes. Oh gosh, same. See, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back and change the variable names because that looks like garbage. So. All right, and let's just run this analysis again. Analyze, descriptives. Explore. What variables are we exploring? Um, impulsivity, drinking, and distress. Okay. So we have our we have our values here. Um, the mean of impulsivity is 0.87. Um, and and if you if you click on these, right. You can, can you click in here? Yes, and you get like a, you can, so sometimes what you'll find is like your, your standard deviation, uh, and this is actually gonna be really important in a, in, a, in a little bit when we try to get the asymptotic covariance matrix after our regression model. Um, but you can click in that box and you can get uh, a much finer kind of um, uh, estimate. So I'm gonna copy that right now. That is our mean for impulsivity. And okay, so we have our mean for impulsivity. What's the next step? Center it. So we can go transform, compute, and let's just call this C impulse equals impulse minus this, right? Hit go. We have a new variable now. Did you rerun? Nope, I'm not rerunning anything. I'm going to center this. I haven't actually run anything yet. Oh, you're right. Command C. We're going to go and do the exact same thing. Transform. Compute. 
C distress equals distress minus that. And then we want to grab our last mean of drinking. Let's see, am I going too fast right now? Transform compute. Who, who has seen the new Sonic movie? Matt has. You you Matt, did you say you haven't? Oh. I, I want to see it. Yeah, they say people expect it to be awful. Ah. Yeah, expectations are on the ground. Gotcha. Yeah. Who has seen the Cats movie? That's what I want to see. <laughs> Nobody in here saw it? I have not. No. I didn't go. Let's all watch it together. Class movie night. We could we could do something like that maybe. Okay. Um, let's do something. Let's do something else here real quick. Let's go transform compute, and let's make our interactions right now since we're going to do this anyway. Let's go impulse by distress. Let's just go imp x dis. Yeah, yeah. Yep, C impulse by C distress. We're going to use all centered variables for this. What are you calling it? Oh, imp, imp x, x dis. <laughs> let's do, let's throw this in here and let's, because we're making these right now. That's drink. Uh, we're just doing all I'm just going to make a couple of three-way interactions. I don't know which one of these. I, I So I, I've been so swamped with APA that I didn't have a chance to go back into my data here and, and remember which ones are which. I know that there is a three-way interaction in here somewhere. We're going to take a guess. Um, and then let's also do distress by sex. So D-I-S-X-S-X. -S -S -S. And transform compute. Let's just go imp. So now C imp. Bisex. And let's make one more just to make sure, just to check on this. Let's go C drink. We're gonna. The last one is gonna be C drink by sex. Real good. Here's the here's the interactions that I made, so you can have a look at those. All right, are we ready? <laughs> yes, no, maybe? Yes, we got it. Okay. Um, let's start with this. Let's go analyze, regression, linear. Um, let's just put drink in. Um, let's put in our centered impulsivity. And let's put in sex. Now let's go to the next one. 
and let's put in sex by impulsivity. Yep. And then the next one is just bisex. Yes. 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 Yes.
For each drink, what happens? Uh, you get a point maybe to another get some alcohol. In alcohol problems, right? Across both groups. Is it across both groups? Probably not. It's, it's not across both match. groups. <laughs> it's it's not across both groups. This is only in the zero group, right? Now, in truth, it, it was on the slide. The big one that. <laughs> that, that I shot past, yeah. It, that's only in the zero group. Um, and, and in fact, if we come up here, look at, oh, I'm sorry, right now, this is, who said across all groups? You were right. Because in step one, it is across all groups. Why is it across all groups in step one? We haven't added, we haven't added the interaction. And so at this point, that is the effect with everybody, right? We haven't looked at whether or not that effect varies by group. And so this is the effect of, of, of everybody. When we move down to step two, we see that our, our constant changes just a little bit. Now, if why does our constant change here? Remember I said that your constant shouldn't change, but it shouldn't change if one, condition, one thing is held constant. What is that? If, if, all of your, if all of your predictors are centered at zero, your constant will never change. Are all of our predictors centered at zero here? No, right? No, They're not we centered have categorical. at zero. Yeah, we yeah. have categorical predictors, so our constant will change a little bit here. Um, so we see a slight change in our constant. Um, we see a are you male or female change from 0.192 from it was 0.199 to 0.192, um, and then uh, that's represented because of the slight shift in that constant, right? Um, we now have a, an effect of 0.929. That's changed quite a bit from up here, right? This 0.929 is now what? Before, just a moment ago, I said this 0.824, I said Moses was right, that that was the effect across everybody, right? Now we have an interaction added. 0.929 is the effect for whom? Men only, right? This is the relationship between alcohol use and alcohol problems for men only. For zero group, yeah. So I know I was the originator of this concept, but like I don't understand why. And I don't know that we have to understand right No, now, you do you do have to understand why. If you don't, I'm glad that you say that. Um, yes. So anytime that you have a it's it's so um let's do this. We are gonna play with chop. You have to think about this in terms of a regression equation, right? Okay, so we have um, y equals x v of x plus v of, we're going to call it m, plus of x times m, okay? And this regression equation really is, when we look at this, a, a regression equation isn't taking all of that data, right? It's taking something very specific for x. What is it taking for x? Yeah, it's taking something. So when you plot a, a regression equation out like this, mm -hmm. what value is it taking for x? One. The mean. No, you're absolutely right. So your slope is this. This the effect is like your mean times your slope, right? What what is our mean here? Wait, do you have to put the mean in there? Just put any value. It's in zero. Yeah. Right? This is this is zero. Our, our mean here is with some kind of weird score, right? Um, and then this is actually because of the way that it's coded. This, this well, yeah, this mean is uh, actually zero also. And then this is going to be whatever x is at any given spot times zero. This will be completely collinear with that, so this is going to get canceled out, and all that you're going to have is that mean effect. This is going to be zero, and when it goes to one, that slope.
flow is just going to change to one, right? Um, on the other hand, that's when that slope changes, it's going to change the function at zero. So, in your regression model, it's. He still looked lost. Anna's laughing. <laughs> I mean, you can plug any any given value into that, right? If you plug any given value, what? Well, oh, okay. So, if we look up there and we say that person five has a value of x that is three, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they're a male, then zero. it's going to be three plus uh, zero. zero plus three times zero, right? Which is zero, mm -hmm. it's just three. For that person, everything else gets zeroed out and it's just three, it's just the slope in that group, right? The intercept is gonna stay whatever the constant is for the zero group. Person, person five now, let's look at this. Let's say that you have person five. Um, you're going to have um, a, a slope times five plus a slope times, if they're a female, it's gonna be what? One. So you're gonna have a slope plus one, and then you're gonna have B3, which is five times one, which will, is, is five, right? So in that, for, for females, both the M coefficient and the X times M coefficient matter, right? For males, they don't matter. It always zeroes out. So that means when you're a male, when you are a zero, this is the, always the effect. When you're a female, the effect is this, plus this effect on the mean, plus this effect on the intercept, right? Does that make more sense? So that's why I say these are always the values in the zero group. It, it, at least x is always the value in the zero group. The other two coefficients, are how the intercept and the slope change if you're not in the zero group. Does that make sense? Good. Okay. Did you, did you start out with the mean just because like it's it's convenient to just? It's convenient. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and, and actually, so um, back to that point. If 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 a person is right at zero, their mean is zero, oh, yeah. right, and they're a male. Then everything is zero. And mm -hmm. what do we know about that person? You're at the intercept. You're at the intercept. That is that is their value, right? Yeah. Everything in this is trying to predict a value for a person. So if your mean is zero and you're a male, then your value has to be at the intercept. It has to be zero, or whatever your intercept is. But okay. So back to this. Um, as we look at our bottom group here, or our bottom grouping, 1.067 is what again? Intercept for males. Um, drinking, the slope for drinking is what? That problems for males, right? Um, is it increasing problems or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so we have those two kind of effects. Those are just specific to males. Okay. Then we have two effects that are specific to females. And it's not actually specific to females. It's how they're different from males. So the main effect of gender or, or biological sex is the difference between males and females. You can, if you subtract those out, you will get the intercept for females, right? And the drink by sex is the difference in slope for males and females. You can subtract that directly from the drink. So who's got a calculator handy? Matt, are you digging for a calculator? Is that your phone sitting right next to you? I have a phone, but I also have a phone. Oh. Yeah, I'm... I use, the, I use the calculator on my phone. Yeah. All right. So, uh, <laughs> somebody figure out what the... What's going on with that? <laughs> <laughs> no one uh, Somebody figure out what the intercept is for females. Negative 0.138 is not right. Okay. 0.875. 0.875 is correct. How did you get 0.875? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you take the constant from the second model and you subtract the constant for gender for biological sex. 
the, exactly. the slope for biological sex. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Um, all right. So that and and are men and women significantly different in average alcohol problems? So we have a, a value of 1.067 and a value of 0.87, and that is a significant difference, right? That's what this tells us right here. This main effect says they differ by this much, and that difference is statistically significant, right? What did we subtract again? It's you constant. subtract this from this. You mean you add? Well, you add, yeah. yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yes, you add. Technically, you always add, right? Okay. But, oh, oh, you add. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Somebody, this, this then is the slope for, this is a relationship between alcohol use and alcohol problems for men. What is the slope for women? Point seven two four. And how did he get 0.724? I added negative. <laughs> I added 0.9 and the negative 0.2. Now, is 0.724 significantly different from 0.929? Yes. That is what this, this test, this is a t-test of the difference in slopes. Oh, 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 yeah, the difference is significant, right? So this is a magnitude of difference in intercepts. This is a magnitude of difference in slopes. Make sense? All right. I'm sure I'm going to forget this. <laughs> Our slope was for, for women was 0.724, right? Yes, yes. Is that slope statistically significant? No, we don't do a minus 1 plus 1 standard deviation with categorical variables. We know that the slope is... 7.24, and we know that 7.24 is significantly lower than 0.929, and we know that 0.929 is statistically significant. Is 0.724 statistically significant? I was going to say no, or we don't know. We don't know. We do not know at this point, right? How do we figure out that? Well, that's what some people said to do in their test. That's not right. No, actually, that's what I asked you to do in the right. test. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I didn't. I, there, there was a question in the exam about moderation, and so, um, but but no, if we want, hey, what we really want to do is we know that this is the effect for men, and men are just the zero group. How do we make this the effect for women? Say it. Go ahead and say it, Anne. Yes, let's make women a zero group. So let's go like this, transform, compute. I always screw this up, but we're going to try our best to get this right. Let's call it R sex equals zero if, whoops, zero if equals one. Do I see or and? Who knows how to? Who is good at doing this in SPSS? The or is the straight line. Can I just do or? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. One if sex I mean, you, you might is equal to zero. Do Will this work? I don't know. It, why not just put parentheses around it? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, around the, each 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 half of the or. Will that work? I'm just going to try this first. Yeah, we'll come back. Nope. Oh, just. Uh, do we know how to do that? Okay, how do we recode a variable? You go into transform, recode into different variables. Ah, that's right. Transform. Recode into different variables. We're going to call this R sex. And then we go old and new values, right? Old value 0, new value 1, add old value 1, new value 0, add. There we go. 
State is so much easier to do this in, just FYI. Oh, yes. Why isn't this working? Uh, you need to click change. So oh, you gotcha. Okay, um, there. I guess you don't need to do that. You're good to go. Okay, so I'm good now? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, now back to our... Who, is everybody... Are we all on the same page now? I'm the slowest one in class right now. Uh, you guys... Now, yep, now you guys are waiting on me. Um, all right, analyze regression linear. Um, Let's pull this out. We need to come back here and we need to pull this out either. Do we need to pull this out? No, it stays the same. Um, our, oh, shoot. We do have to, we need to make an interaction, right? Let's go transform, compute. We have a new interaction variable. This is going to be drink by R sex. There we go. Now analyze regression linear. Remove that. Go back one. Remove this. And let's put in R sex here. And then let's put in drink by R sex here. Now, a couple of questions. What's going to happen to our intercept in this next model? It is now going to represent the mean for females. Females. So it should be higher or lower? Lower. By how much? 0.2. Roughly 0.2. Yep, roughly 0.2. Um, what's going to happen to our slope for um, impulsivity predicting alcohol problems? Or I'm sorry, drinks predicting alcohol problems? What's going to happen to the slope between drinks and problems? It's going to go lower. It's going to decrease to like what? 0.7. 0.724, perfect. And what is going to happen to our um, slope for our interaction variable? It's going to flip signs. It'll flip signs, and the value will change to? 0 0.2. 0 0.205? So the value won't actually change, right? The value stays exactly the same. The signs will flip because now it's saying, here's the slope for women. And the slope for men increases by this much. Last time it was negative. This time it should be positive. Let's have a look and see if this works the way that it says it should. R squared are exactly the same as last time. And if we come down here, yes, we see 0.875 is our new constant. 0.724 is the effect the relationship between drinking and problems. And so the constant again is what? Uh, mean for women. The uh, drinking is the slope for women, right? The main effect of our sex is what? Uh, Say it. Yeah, the difference, in, <laughs> the difference in means between fem uh, women and Perfect. The difference in mean, the difference in intercept, right, between men and men and women, and this this coefficient now represents what? Which one? 0.205. Yeah, the change in slope between. The change in slope between men and women. Perfect. Who's lost right now? Anybody? Oh, man, I feel pretty good then. Let's just call it a day. Um, no. Uh, we started this. We started this with a specific question. What was our specific question? The reason that we went to recode. Emily, why did we go to recode? You're the one who said it. Oh, Gabby, what was the reason we went to recode? Perfect, right? We wanted to know if 0.724 was statistically significant, right? We were able to tell all of these other things. We were able to tell if, if the... Um, Differences in intercepts were statistically significant. We were able to tell if the slope for men was statistically significant. Um, we were able to tell that the differences in slopes was statistically significant, but we didn't know if the slope for women was statistically significant. And now we do, and the answer is, Saba? Yes, it is statistically significant. There we go. All right. Um, so uh, the next step is what? Call it a day. Let's let's not get everybody confused. 
So you don't have to, right? We already know that, that answer. We know that men, on average, experience more problems. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, alcohol leads to more problems th for men than it does for women, right? The relationship between drinking and problems is stronger for men than it is for women. It's, it's like, more positive. Right. So that's all you have to do. Because the number is higher. Yep, because the number is higher. Remember, it's all on the same scale. So as soon as it's higher, then you know that, that it is not only is it higher, but it's significantly higher for men and women. And how do we conclude that it's significantly higher for men and women? By that interaction. That interaction says, hey, there's a relationship here. Both of the relationships are statistically significant, but men's relationship is significantly stronger than women's relationship. That's what our interaction tells us, right? So if we had, if we were testing with the reverse code and we found it insignificant uh, for that woman, uh, let's say that 0.724 was not statistically right. significant. Can you conclude then that the moderated relationship is statistically significant since the non-significant result kind of indicates that we can't really tell that it's significant that it's zero? We don't actually know where it is. What does, what do, so A, um, the moderation effect, the interaction effect, is just saying there are two slopes and those slopes are different, right? If we find that the slope for women is not significantly different, all that means is there's no relationship between drinking and problems for women. There's a strong relationship between drinking and problems for men. Now, this goes back to the, the, the thing that I was talking about earlier. You might have an intervention, like let's say you do an intervention um, for alcohol, right? And instead of men and women, it's that you've done some sort of intervention. And what you might find is that in one condition, the relationship between drinking and problems is very strong. But after the intervention, the people who got the intervention, the relationship between drinking and problems is not there at all, right? And that would indicate that your intervention was successful, right? Like you broke the link between drinking and problems. Um, so yeah, no, you can absolutely have a non-significant slope. In fact, um, I think the example that I put up there for you guys had a non-significant slope at like low levels uh, or high levels of protective strategies. In that case, what it was saying was that for people with high protective strategies, alcohol no longer predicts problems, right? Yeah, so we're, we're I mean, the, the fact that those, that one slope becomes non-significant is, is irrelevant. Sometimes you will find a significant interaction effect and your, neither of the slopes will be statistically significant. If your simple slopes, these are called simple slopes, right? We're, probing these simple slopes. So sometimes you have a relationship that looks like this. This is your main effect, right? This is when everything's held constant at zero. Plus one, you have a, let's say that you're, you have an effect of like 0.4, but your P equals 0.1, okay? And then here you have an effect of minus 0.4, minus 1 SP, and your P is going to equal again 0.1. You could have these two slopes be not statistically significant and still have a significant interaction effect because it's measuring this, right? And so you might be able to say like, hey, neither of these things are statistically significant, but they are significantly different from each other. Is that so, Probably not. <laughs> Right, because you're, <laughs> you can say like one is positive and one is negative. Of course, it could be meaningful, and that leads us to the next phase of this. There's a problem with all of this, right? Actually, let's not do that. Let's not go there quite yet. Let's take a break, then we'll come back, and we will look at um, continuous variables instead of, instead of categorical variables.